a little while ago, I released a video on the Bushcraft Essential Outdoor Pocket Micro Stove EDC Box, the tiny stove with the big name. And although I considered that re review comprehensive, one thing I just could not do consistently was to bring two cups of water to a boil using wood. Well, at the end of that video, I said I wasn't about to give up on the stove because I liked the design. I thought it had the potential. So since then, I've done a lot more work around trying to get a consistent boil using wood with the stove. And I have. And I want to share those tips with you today. If you're interested, keep watching. Okay, before we get started with the tricks I've learned to get two cups of water to a boil reliably with wood, uh, there's a couple things I just want to go back over. So after that video, I received a lot of comments from viewers on things that I might do differently or other things that I could do with the stove and ways I could use it. And I'm going to share a couple of those with you. The other thing I wanted to mention is I did hear from the engineer at Bushcraft Essentials commenting on my video and offering me some advice or some suggestions to get better performance out of the stove. So the first thing that I had said is I did not consider this stove to be a winter stove or a cold weather stove. I said it's because of its size, it just wouldn't generate the critical mass of heat to keep it going for a long period of time. Well, the uh, engineer at Bushcraft Essential wanted to point out that these stoves are actually in use by at least two special forces units in the Arctic conditions, using to stay warm under a poncho with a tea light. Now, that's amazing, really it is. And yeah, I suspect it would work. I suspect also that uh, they're not, they are maybe using it to warm water to make coffee or drinks or whatever they are doing. Not quite the same as bringing two cups of water to a boil, but it is something that can be used in cold weather, just to clear that up. The other thing that the engineer said is he gave me some ideas on how to use wood and I added that to what I experienced myself and I'm going to share that with you in a minute. He also pointed out a number of videos that are out there including his, his own or at least videos where or he's told me about his own experiences cooking with this stove using a fry pan and, and cooking up small meals. And it, yes, that's entirely possible. And I also want to be clear that I said you can easily bring one to one and a half cups of water to a rolling boil using wood with this. It was just the dynamic of two cups of water that seemed to give this trouble. Not always, but often enough that I didn't consider it reliable. Well, let me take you down to the tabletop. I'll show you what I've come up with and then we'll get outside and we'll do some burn tests. Okay, before I share with you the lessons I learned in using this little stove with wood, I want to share with you something else that one of my viewers mentioned and I decided to try. And that is how to use the stove with a gel alcohol like the Fire Dragon from BCB. And uh, I bought this. I didn't have any. I hadn't used it before. I have had other fire gel or alcohol gels that I've used, but I wanted to try the Fire Dragon out specifically. So I did order some up and I have this and I have tried this. Here's what I've learned about using it with this tiny stove. So first off, you obviously need something inside of the stove to act as a cup to hold the gel so it just doesn't pour through the bottom. So here's a little trick that I kind of figured out on my own. Maybe somebody else has already done this, but I used a piece of foil and to create a little cup, I just took one. This is probably six, maybe yeah, about six inches square and I'm folding that twice to create what a two inch square maybe a little less and then I take a stick that I know will fit down inside of the stove and rather than doing a lot of fancy folds to create an origami little cup of some type I just take the tint of the foil the aluminum foil and hold it over the end of the stick and crunch it <laughs> just crunch it down and form a little cup that way nothing fancy but it does form a nice little cup that is deep enough to hold an ounce, ounce and a half of the gel alcohol, which is more than enough to bring it to a boil. Then all I need to do is drop that down inside of the stove, put the alcohol inside and we're ready to go. And I'll give you a demonstration of that because I think it's worth seeing how well that does work. All right, so what else did I learn? So the first trick that I want to share with you about using wood is this came from one of my viewers and I had tried this. I just wasn't able to make it successful. So I went back and gave it another shot and now I can. I'll share with you how I got it to work and that is to create a Swedish fire 
torture, feed a Swedish fire log inside of the stove. I know it's done with a lot of the larger size stoves very successfully. It's a great way to have a long burning, even steady burning fire in a stove. But inside something this small, well, I have tried vertically stacked sticks just below the surface that I would burn down. They would work, except they would burn through quite quickly. And then I'd end up feeding more little sticks in if I wanted to keep the fire going. Well, this is done with a full four piece fire log. So what I did is, uh, this is a piece of maple branch. It is uh, just over an inch, maybe an inch and a quarter in diameter. And I cut a section off that is, well, I'll give you the measurement on screen, just how long it is, but I'll show you where, where how tall it sits inside of the little stove. But before I cut it off, I slightly feathered the outside edges. Hopefully you'll be able to see the feathering on that. Just slightly feathered the outside edges. You'll see why in a second. Because the way that I did that this time based on the viewer's suggestion is instead of sticking the wood down inside in its round shape I do what Steve at the firebox does stove does often which is to turn it around and take the corners and fit them into well the corners of the stove so let me do that fitting these down inside now you don't what I've discovered also is you don't want to use too big a stick for this you don't want something that doesn't give you much room down the center because of course the trick to getting a fire torch lit is to have a well two things one is enough airflow from the sides as well as the bottom to feed the the fire in the center but also to have enough of an opening down the center that you can get a little bit of a fire started with a fire starter with this i'm not doing this with the wood to get a little fire started but with a fire i might use some fat wood for the demonstration so hopefully you can see what i've done is i just reversed that stick in to the corners and the feathered edges are facing downwards and now i'll stop stuff stuff a little bit of fire starter maybe a little bit of fat wood down inside and we'll light that it takes a minute or two and then it will catch on and it burns for a fair amount of time and we'll record it but you'll see where i the height of the stick where i cut it off is just at the bottom of the holes and that's part of the trick if you get the wood too close to the top of the stove even though you're using the crossbars it, uh, it it doesn't get enough air enough exhaust room for the fire so don't make it too big to to uh, so that it uh, doesn't fit in the stove just perfectly all right that's one trick now let me show you the next trick all right so what i'm about to show you is not so much a trick as it is just making sure that you adhere to the basics of good fire management and what i mean by that is all the principles of fire management you have to pay particular attention to and be as strict as you can with them in order to get this to its maximum efficiency <clears throat> so to begin use some type of a base underneath the stove. Now I'm using a metal plate for this example, but it could be a stone that you place it on. It could be hard mineral earth that place it on. It could even be a block of wood that you place it on. Uh, yes, you still have to be careful and make sure you have a fire safe surface or at least that you're able to manage any fire that starts to spread outside of the stove. But the problem is where I used it in the last video is it was on it was compacted soil, or but at the same time, I think the weight of the pot of water was starting to push the stove into the earth a little bit, and it was occluding airflow underneath. So that's one thing you've got to have good airflow. Same with all stoves, but especially true with a small stove like this. So make sure it's on something firm and hard that you don't it won't push down into and occlude the airflow. The other thing is is that I think the earth was damp, quite damp and cold, of course. So it was drawing moisture out of the earth, which just worked against the fire so yeah that's the reason have something underneath your stove that'll insulate it from the cold damp earth and make sure it doesn't sink into the earth now the next trick was and it's not, again it's not so much a trick it's just a lesson learned and that is the size of the pot that you're going to use on top of the stove so in that demonstration I used a pot that was about 10 centimeters in diameter but what I've discovered is when you use a larger size pot um, it's difficult to see what you're doing if you, unless you want to get right down on your knees and elbows to see feeding into the stove that you want to be able to see what you're doing so a smaller diameter pot is going to make it easier the other thing about a large diameter pot is it's easier to tip over so yeah that can be an issue as well for all your hard work put gone to waste so for this test I'm going to be using a 750 milliliter titanium pot that is smaller in diameter but can still hold the two cups of water that I want for this test. Now here's a small trick that I've learned from experience and it happens often enough that I'm going to avoid it in this test and that is the bottom of pots quite often, at least my pots, get very sooty, very 
carrot up and lots of creosote on the bottom. What I found was happening is, is when I placed them on top of the stove, that that creosote and tar and everything started to get warm, it started to get soft, it started to glue itself to the cross stands. I'd lift the pot off and I'd pull the pot stand off with it. So for this test, I've done something I never do, which is I clean the bottom of my pot so I'm down to bare titanium again. So now that when I place it on top, there's very little chance of me actually pulling those cross stands off of it. All right, so pot aside, now we're on to the next step. And here are some more of the basics. All stoves benefit from a windscreen of some type. That's never more true than it is with a small stove like this. So a windscreen, I'm using an aluminum piece of aluminum windscreen for this test. This is made out of a, a roof flashing that I just formed into a shape, punched some holes in the bottom, and I can make it to, well, let's just put it together and I'll show you what I mean. So now I have an aluminum windscreen that will fit around the stove and protect it from the wind, but doesn't occlude air from getting in at the bottom. So that's important is to protect your stove from the wind. Next thing is your choice of wood. And this came from the engineer at Bushcraft Essentials. And it's true, it's, it's not some, no magic to this. Use the best possible wood. Make sure your wood is extremely dry. Uh, whatever wood you choose, be it hardwood or softwood, make sure it's extremely dry and make sure it is small in diameter. So what I brought or I have for this test will be, this is all firewood. There is, that's birch, maple, yeah, that's maple and oak. So it's just firewood, little pieces that are cut off of branches that I split down small very small as you can see you know what is that uh, a quarter inch not it's not much if it's more than, than a quarter inch in uh, diameter so it's just split now i could have used softwood twigs and i probably will just to get the fire going because softwood does ignite a little faster although it burns through faster so a good bundle now i mentioned in that first video to have more than you think you're going to use uh, because that's always a good idea just to have enough that you can ensure you don't have to go searching for wood afterwards. All right, so that's another ch little uh, hint that will help you get to a boil faster or consistently. Now here's one, and I'm going to see if I can arrange the stove to show this. So I have a rock. I've done this with a stick, but I'm using a rock in this case, and you'll see why. Um, the feed port on this little stove is like many of the German designed stoves in that it's elevated, intended for sticks to be dropped down inside. Well, in order for that to work on a stove this small, your sticks are going to have to be smaller or shorter than that, because what happens is as they burn, now probably do it this way even better. It's hard to keep the stick inside the stove. It just wants to drop out. And that's even more true. As the stick is consumed, there's more weight outside of the stove than inside of the stove. So then the stick falls out and you lose your wood out of the fire. So a little trick that I've learned is to bring a rock or a piece of wood or something to about the same height as the uh, feed port and then feed your sticks in this way. Now I'm still elevated well above the floor, although I'm, they are angled down in some cases like this and now it's easier to continuously push the sticks in without worry about them just flipping out because I wasn't on top of the pushing in and this way you can get a lot of sticks inside and you know you arrange them the way you want and you just continuously feed your sticks in they're crisscrossing in there now and there's still lots of room for the fire to be you know air to move through the wood and underneath it so that has helped a lot in terms of keeping the stove fed with wood all right, those are the basics just brought back so that we have talked about them and made sure that we can do it this way. So now obviously the next thing is to get outside and I'm gonna do both tests or three tests, I guess. One with the dragon fire gel, another with my little tiny Swedish fire torch, and another with a quantity of small, small splits. All right, let's get outside.